to celebrate the life and legacy of Brother Otis Franklin. Come on, would you just give God a hand clap of praise? Come on, would you just give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. 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 Today we've come to celebrate his life. We've come to give God thanks and praise for God allowing us to have Big O on this earth and in our lives uh, for such a long time as God did. Would you just celebrate God one more time for the life of Brother Otis Franklin? Amen. 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 At this time, there is an order of service that we're going to follow. Um, there will be a selection. I've been redeemed by Brother Wilbur Turner, and following that we will have Old Testament scriptures read by Reverend George Curry, New Testament scripture read by Reverend Hosea Anderson, and then a prayer by Reverend Emmanuel Arnawa, and then a selection by Miss Julia Arnold in that order. family uh, sister Pat said I could say one thing or two before I sing and uh, keep playing brother Todd and we'll be real brief I want to tell you how I met Big O he walked up to me one day and he said do you have a barber I said well not really he said well uh, I'm a hairstylist and uh I've been cutting hair around East Mount Zion. And if you'll let me, I'd like to take care of yours. And I said, well, you know, since I don't have one, you can be him. And from that day, we uh, got to know each other. We started out singing together, but uh, we talked about Alabama. We both moved to Cleveland years ago, but our heart never left Alabama, so every time he stopped by to cut my hair, we talked about things that happened for us in Alabama. So Otis, I'm going to miss those conversations. The other thing I want to say about Big O is that I was impressed. He was a good example for the young and the old. Of latter years, when trouble came into his life, his son's illness, so on and so forth, periodically, Big Otis would always come down to the altar and ask for prayer. To me, that was a testament of his faith in God because he believed what the Bible said that men ought always to pray. But what I admired about that more than anything, Odin just come by himself. He would grab his wife's hand and bring her with him. And they said a family that prays together, stay together. So with that, I'm gonna sing one of Otis's testimony.
tell of his favor. I'll tell of his love. I'll tell. His precious blood, and it's all because I am redeemed. Now, where there was hate, love now, love now abides. Where there was confusion, peace now reign. And Otis told me to tell y'all this. I'm walking with my Jesus. <laughs> I'm a child of the King. It is all because I am. Redeem. That's why I am redeemed. I'm bought with, I've been bought with a price. For Jesus has changed my whole life. A scripture reading from the New Testament. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. This is the word of the Lord. Reading of the Old Testament from the 23rd Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, 
they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the reading of the Old Testament. He that dwelleth in the secret places of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Most holy and most precious Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, we humbly come today Father, I pray your forgiveness upon this, your sinful servant. Forgive me and forgive us anything that we have done wrong. We are not worthy to call upon your name. Oh, but how great thou art. For you made the heavens, you made the earth. You made everything. There is nothing that was made that was not made by you. And Lord, you created man in your own image. But somewhere, somehow along the line, we did wrong. And we continue to do wrong even today. We left you. We, we went our ways. But God, you are always there. You have your way of pulling us back to yourself. You're always there. You, you never turn your back on us, regardless of our wrong. And you looked upon us and you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for our sins. To bring us back to you, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for my brother Otis. We thank you for what you did in his life. Father, we thank you on how you created him and gave him many talents. But Otis can fix anything. Because you did that. But what is is a humble man. You gave him that. But what is is a forgiven man. And you gave him that. He is a loving man. He is your son. We cry for him leaving us here. We will wonder if there will be another Otis. But we know. The Bible says, and we know 
that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So, Lord, you know all about this. He is in your bosom right now. And we thank you for his life. Father, we come now for his wife. She showed us how to take care of her husband. What a lesson in, ev in everything that you do, in everything that happens, there is a lesson. You, you, you showed us through this whole episode on how tenderly and carefully she took care of her husband. Was always there. <laughs> Even when she could not go into the hospital to, to see him, she went to the window. She stood by the window to see her husband. What a lesson that you have taught us, O oh God. Now, O oh God, we pray a covering upon her. Comfort her, O oh God, and strengthen her especially at a time when everyone is gone and she's alone. Comfort her with these words. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From hands come at my help. Sister Pat, your help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel <laughs> never slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. My sister, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shield upon your right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. My sister, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this day, this day. And even forevermore, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
So, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. At this time, uh, the program calls for remarks, and uh, we have several names on this program um, for remarks, starting with Deacon McDowell. The program does not uh, designate time, and so I guess uh, they left that up to me. And so... Uh, I'm, I ask every person who is on program to give remarks that they would um, limit their remarks to two minutes, please, um, so that we can um, get through our order of service. And so um, those of you who have a program know your name is on the program, so I will not call all of the names on the program. And so what I'm going to ask is that everyone who is on the program to speak would line up with behind Deacon McDowell over here. Wave your hand, Deacon McDowell. There he is. Those of you who are on program would line up over here. And uh, the stand right here is here for you. And we'll adjust it uh, for you as well. So please, two minutes, um, limit your remarks. Um, Brother Pitts, would you raise your hand? Okay, when Brother Pitts stands up, that means you are over your two minutes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Come on, Deacon McDowell. Good morning. Testing. Testing. Good morning, my name again is Deacon Bobby McDowell, Chairman, Board of Deacons. And in fact, if you ask the church members, half of them would say, Big O, Otis Franklin, is also a deacon. Because back when I was a teenager, we would say he hang out with a certain group. So he hanged out with the deacons, so many thought he was a deacon. The only way we would tell the difference is the way he dressed. <laughs> he didn't dress like the rest of the deacons. In fact, if you uh, noticed this morning, and also if you notice some of the pictures in the program, you would see that this young man, Brother Otis Franklin, knew how to dress. Right. Amen. Right. And in fact, when he would walk in, I would say, oh boy, if I could just dress like that. <laughs> also, when I think about Big O, we're going to also miss him with the Brotherhood Chorus. And I spoke to Brother Thomas this morning, and he said, well, Chairman McDowell, maybe you can fill in that spot. I said, oh, no, sir. <laughs> he had a clear bass voice, and we certainly will, will miss him. At a time like this, we, we often ask ourselves, what should we say to this family? What should we say? And then we say, well, maybe we should write a new prayer. But we don't need to write a new prayer because God gave us the model prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, maybe we should write a new song. We don't need to write a new song because God gave us songwriters. And in fact, we have a book of songs. My favorite one, one of my favorites, written by Jane Weldon Johnson when he wrote, Lift 
every voice and sing. And his third verse, he said, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who hast brought us thus far on the way, thou who by thy might led us into the light, keep us in thy path. We pray. Amen. Good morning. I was nominated president of the Brotherhood, and I'm serving my time as well as I can. But the big O was a, like uh, an inspiration for me because he set an example for love for his fellow brother, the un the ones who felt that though they were ready for Christ, he encouraged them by his example with the brotherhood. All of the things that we have learned, a lot of them had to do with the influence of the big O. The big O was, as you would check the, uh, the obituary, you will always see the big O was on key with everything he said, the way he appeared, and the things that he example by coming to the altar when prayer was needed. And he example was to bring his wife with him. The, the, earlier they say, family prays together, stays together. And he did. And for all I can say now is that he's complete. God put him here, and God said, you're, you're finished. And that's all I have to say, but he was a fantastic brother to know, to love. And Pat, he loved you, his family, and he loved his East Mount Zion Church. Amen. Otis Franklin, one big O. Otis and I met here at East Mount Zion about 30 years ago. We all used to sit up there in that balcony every Sunday. Otis and I established a relationship between his wife and my wife was friends, and from that he and I established a relationship that lasted from that time up until now. I can truly say Otis was a friend of mine. There were times when we would just sit and talk sometime after church, just he and I, and we would discuss things that had happened in our lives. And here, uh, he was always, uh, he was busy. He always was trying to get me to come out and golf with him. I would promise him that I was coming and golf with him, but I mean, that time never got there. I would always tell him, man, I cannot hit a ball a mile and then walk behind it to hit it another mile, <laughs> you know? And uh, he said, well, that is because, Brad, you just don't know the game. I said, you're right, I don't know the game. But I'll tell you what, I make a promise with you that I will come out to the driving range and we could drive two or three buckets of balls. You say, oh, that ain't no fun. <laughs> so O was always busy. If he wasn't playing golf, he was in the, in the winter, he was bowling. So he, he had a busy life. If when he wasn't bowling, he was working on his houses, you know. So. I call a friend because when I had 
my hips operated on. He would pass by and he would holler at me. Sometimes he would even send me cards. Sometimes he would put a little money in the cards to me. So, you know, I'm gonna miss Otis no matter what. Anybody else might think about him. He was a friend of mine. I can truthfully say that he was a friend of mine. But I can say to Pat and the family, let not your heart be troubled. Believe also in, in God, believe in me. In my father's house there are many mansions. So on December 14, Otis decided to leave from his house and go to his father's house to get his mansion. Now we do not know how large or how small Otis' mansion are, but we do know if there's any blemish or anything like that that is in his mansion. He's going to get his tools out and get busy trying to make it be what he wanted to be. So I'm going to say that we miss your orders and you sleep on and take your rest. My name is James Patterson. And uh, I'm from the uh, schoolmaster's bowling league. You know, when uh, Pat asked me to do this, um, you know, I said, uh, she don't know, she got a rambler. And then when the, uh, then when the pastor said two minutes, Lord help me. I said, well, you know what? I said, I better write this down <laughs> to make sure that I don't, Ramble on. Okay. I met Otis 21 years ago when I joined the schoolmaster's golf bowling league. I soon found out that he was a good bowler. I also found out that he was a dancer. When Old made a strike, he would bust a move that would make James Brown proud. He was a true showman. No one had more fun at bowling than O. Otis was more than just a bowler, though. He was a welcoming person, a golfer, a repairman, a workout fanatic. He and Pat would welcome the golf league to their home for our season-ending get-together. They were great hosts. All of our members look forward to going to O's house. But on bowling day, O would do things that belied his age. I'm 10 years younger than O, and on bowling day, I would take a nap to refresh for bowling. Not O. He would tell me I played nine holes of golf today and shot 39. If you know anything about golf, if you shoot anything in the 30s, you are a good golfer. But O would tell me I had to show them that the old man still got it. Another day he would say, I just came from working on my rental property. I had to make it like new for the next tenant. Another Tuesday he would say, I got my workout in today. You know I need to stay in shape so I can keep up with the young folks. None of these activities affected his bowling. He would beat up on us and dance right out of the alley. On behalf of the Schoolmasters Bowling League, I would like to thank Pat for sharing him with us. The league is gonna miss his style and grace. Roll on, big O. My name is Dwight Stewart, better known as Stu. O to me was a friend competitor, teammate, and he kept me laughing. 
I thought about this morning. I said, I met Otis in 68. 52 years, two thirds of my life. And I've never seen him frown. Always had a laugh on his face. In a bowling alley, I could handle him. On that golf course, I was his. And a lot of folks was his. He had a, a quirk with him. He'd always be laughing. He had motions and everything. And then them get on the putting green, he'd get the guys. Green could be as big as this room. And always had a little motion. Uh, can you get out of my peripheral? That means get off the green. You're nine miles behind him. And the guys are getting mad, and I stand over there laughing. And they mess up the hole, always the win the hole. And I started looking at him, I said, hmm, there's a method to his madness. So when he did that peripheral thing again, I told him, I said, uh-huh, somebody read the dictionary this morning. Because I knew the other guy didn't know what he was talking about. But that was, oh, when his big toe went out a year ago in bowling, he wouldn't quit. I told him, I said, man, you better go get operated on. He said, oh, I will, I will. He'd be out there, he'd throw the ball, and he'd dump. He had something like that, he'd do some little motion like that. Big old still got it. I said, yeah, but you're losing. <laughs> <laughs> but here's my guy. He brought Pat to the bowling alley one day. Pat and my wife were sitting back there. They were cheering us on and everything. And I used that on, oh, he was so busy watching Pat and Cookie that I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was my guy, I'm gonna miss him. I miss him a whole lot. And uh, that's just speaking from Ford uh, Bowling League and the employees at Ford. Willie here, he's gonna do the other half of it. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Willie Clopton. I've been knowing Otis for over 50 years when I stayed in East Cleveland and started at Ford. Otis held us together. Otis started the black, helped started the black caucus at Ford though. They helped blacks get into skilled trade. Otis helped started the breakfast club. We all appreciate everything that Otis have did for us. He kept us together. We sure appreciated him and it is hard, you know, because I've been knowing him so long and we've always been friends. He kept me out of trouble, you know, because I'm the one that would hit somebody in a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't care for him and so what if you, you're out of place though, I'm gonna tag you. <laughs> so, but uh, I wanna tell Pat though, we gonna miss over this though, and we hope that you stick with us because I'm gonna try my best to keep the breakfast club going because that was his though, and he kept it going as the most they were born to retire. So him and uh, Reverend Reary, I think them the only two that was left that would still come. And he just kept that together for us. So it's uh, things that I wanna say, I can't get it out right now though, but uh, I love Otis and I appreciate everything that he did for us and his, legacy will go on with us. So I'm just saying, wherever he's at, and the good Lord is taking care of him, let him look down and make sure that we keep everything going for him. Thank you, everyone. Amen, amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for those comments? At this time, uh, Miss Gwen Brown, is going to come and read our resolutions. Um, but as she comes, I want uh, to take a moment also for our reading of our obituary. Uh, and then, Ms. Brown, would you proceed after that? All right, let's just take a few moments to look through the obituary. I know by this time everybody has looked through it from front to back. Um, but let's just take a few moments and read the obituary.
Amen. At this time, uh, Ms. Gwen, Gwen Brown is going to come and read our resolution and acknowledgments. Following that, we will have a selection by Bishop Askew and Polly Askew in that order. Good morning to everyone and to the family of Brother Otis Franklin. Proclamation from the city of Maple Heights. Whereas Otis Franklin has resided at 20728 Donnie Brook Road in the city of Maple Heights since January 1990, and whereas Otis Franklin was a loving and devoted husband to his wife Pat and a special father to his six children, and whereas Otis Franklin was the patriarch of the Franklin family and as a father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. And whereas Otis Franklin worked 42 years at the Ford Motor Company, Walton Hill Stamping Plant, and whereas Otis Franklin was very active in his church as a member of the male choir, the Sunday school program, Brotherhood Association and Group 17, and was also an avid golfer and bowler. And whereas Otis Franklin died on December 15, 2020. And whereas Otis Franklin's death is being mourned, not only as a personal loss to his wife, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and the other family members, friends and neighbors, but also as a loss for the city of Maple Heights. Now, therefore, I, as Wynna Agee, Councilman of the District 7 of the city of Maple Heights, do hereby proclaim Otis Franklin to be an exceptional citizen of the city of Maple Heights and wish to express our condolences to the Franklin family as we honor his memory. It's signed by Edwina A.G., Councilman, District 7, City of Maple Heights. Condolences from the Mount Zion Church of Oakwood Village to the family of Brother Otis Franklin, it is with deep sympathy and tenderness of heart that we, the pastors and members of the Mount Zion, express in a humble way our condolences to you in the passing of your loved one, Otis Franklin. We know that Otis will be missed by family and friends touched by his love and compassion. Have the blessed assurance that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ knows the pain you feel in your loss and that he will grant you peace and comfort. We want to assure you that you will be in our thoughts and prayers over the weeks and months to come in the loss of your loved one. We know that God will be your refuge and strength, providing all that you need to make it through this time of bereavement. We pray that the peace of Almighty God that surpasses all understanding comforts you not only today, but in years to come as you think of the cherished memories of your loved one, Otis Franklin. With heartfelt sympathy, Reverend Dr. Mary, Larry L. Macon, Sr. Resolution from the Franklin Goodman family in loving memory of Otis Big Old Franklin. Though your days among us were too brief and our grief at your loss is never ending, we draw comfort from the knowledge that you have found safe refuge in the Lord and in our hearts 
where no darkness or pain can touch you now. We bless you with love, light, and our gratitude. Whereas Otis Franklin of Cleveland, Ohio, passed from this life on December 15th, 2020, and whereas Otis Franklin see justice in all circumstances, death does not diminish the profound benediction of a life lived in such a godly service. He freely gave of his time and energy to the Franklin family reunion. He was a pillar in the foundation of the reunion. He supported the family and the reunion efforts with a bright, steady spirit and cheerful heart for many years. To him, family was deeds and not words. You could always count on his support. Whereas the family and acquaintances of Otis Franklin are deeply saddened at departure, as are all who were touched by his generous spirit and kindnesses. Tears will be shed as we celebrate his life, but we know that he is looking down, urging us to forge our own paths while strengthening our bonds tighter. His legacy will continue to inspire his loved ones. Therefore, be it resolved that we bow to a greater will than our own and rest in the knowledge that one day we will be united with him again in joy and in the full fullness of God's mercy. Humbly submitted in faith and appreciation for the gift of our time with Otis Franklin on December 30th, 2020, the Franklin Goodman family. This is a resolution from the East Mount Zion Baptist Church. If you're able, members, would you like to stand, please? Mm -hmm. In resolution of, am I still on? Mm -hmm. Okay. In resolution of, in memory of, resolution in memory of Brother Otis Franklin. Psalms 23 and 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. To his wife, Patricia, sons Michael, Orlando, Derek, Daryl, daughter Talia, and the other family members, Pastor Brian A. Cash, along with officers and members of the East Mount Zion Baptist Church extend our deepest sympathy on the passing of Brother Otis Franklin. Our hope should always be in the promises of God's word that there is a better place for his children. For as written in the Psalm of David, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Brother Franklin joined East Mount Zion on February 9th, 1958 from 45th Street Baptist Church of Birmingham, Alabama on his Christian experience. He served here at East Mount Zion as a member of the Sunday School Class Number 1, Group 17, Brotherhood Union, and a member of the Brotherhood Corps. Don't think of him as gone away. His journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is only one. 
Just think of him as resting from his pain and tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days or years. Think how he must be wishing that we could know today how nothing but our sadness can really ever pass away. And think of him as living in the hearts of those he touched. For nothing loved is lost, and he was loved very much. God bless each of you, the family, and may the love of Christ enfold you in the days ahead. For only God is able to, to heal your wounded hearts. Prayerfully submitted on this 30th day of December 2020 by the East Mount Zion Church family, Reverend Brian A. Cash is our pastor, Brother Bobby J. McDowell is chairman of Deacons, and Sister Ingrid Blaylock is one chairwoman of the trustees. Thank you and God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, everyone. Got a lot to overhear from Pastor Cash, Sister, Miss Carolyn. My dad came in contact with him before I came in contact with his wife in 1980 when I started playing at Second Mount Carmel um, Baptist Church. And we're just one big family. So I want to say to you, Pat, and to all the children and to all of you that we love you very much. I don't have to say it. You know all that we've already done. We love you very much. Um, my mother was going to sing something else. And I came to her. I said, I want you to do another particular song. And I hope they will be a blessing to you. I'm glad I know he lives. Yeah. 
is God, we thank you that you're still alive. For if you would be dead still, there would be no hope for Otis today. But God, I thank you that you got up from the grave so that the day when we meet our grave, there would be hope for us to get out of our grave as well. Thank you this morning that you continually walk with us. Thank you this morning that despite our own difficulties, God, you continue to be there by our side. This morning we lift up the Franklin family. We pray, oh God, that you would continue to be with them and remind them that your peace that surpasses all understanding will guard their hearts and their minds in you. Thank you, God, for allowing us to have Brother Otis for such as a time that you allowed us to have him. Thank you, God, that your word is true to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Thank you, God, that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Now, Lord, we pray that you would guide our thoughts through this eulogy. Bless everything that continues to happen that it may glorify you. Is it your name that we pray? Every child of God said amen. If the Lord is good to you, why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Just a few moments to share with this family and to those who are watching us on live stream. We lift up this family and we lift up Mrs. Franklin, you, and we continue to pray with you and for you. And we thank God for you and the strength that the Lord gave you these last few months. 
as you took care of your husband. Amen. And so we thank God that God continues to do what God is going to do in our lives. Isaiah chapter 43, verse number 20 says, the wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. The people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. For a moment this morning, I want to talk on this subject, created to show off God. Created to show off God. I was scrolling through Facebook and the other day and saw this beautiful picture of who you affectionately call Big O. Brother Otis Franklin was uh, styling and profiling on this picture with you and Miss Franklin and you, Tamaya, and I said, look at that man. He's showing off how good he looks. And then I was looking at this program and I saw all of these beautiful pictures from front to back. Look at how well he could dress. And look at how well he looked. And then I had the privilege to walk up to this casket. And then Miss Franklin reminded me that that was um, a picture. The same picture in the program was the outfit that he has on today. And look at how well he looks. Now someone from looking from the outside in... Uh, to the life of Brother Otis Franklin would identify him as a show-off because he dressed well and looked good. So somebody would say that, uh, you know, when I saw Brother Otis Franklin, he just looked like he wanted to show off and, and uh, impress everybody and make everybody feel good and say, look at me. Because, you know, there are people who like to show off. <laughs> Show off folks are individuals who always want the picture and the finger pointed at themselves. Show off individuals are self-centered individuals that everything is centered around me and it's me, myself, and I. Everybody jumping in the picture when it's time to take a picture. Everything is centered around you. That's a show off type of person. A show off type of person is a person who understands that they are larger than life and nobody is better than them, but everything is about them and never about anyone else. That's a show off. And from looking from the outside in and looking at this program and looking at pictures on Facebook, someone may make the mistake and say Brother Otis was a show off. But I've discovered that from looking at these pictures and listening to these stories and my interactions with Mrs. Franklin and my interactions over the past year with Brother Franklin, Brother Franklin was not a show-off of himself, but he was a show-off of the God that created him. And as I began to think about why Brother Franklin was not a show-off for himself, but a show off from for God, it really connects to his history. Born in Birmingham, Alabama, and working at Ford Motor Company for 42 years, there are years of difficulty. 
There are years of stress. My granddaddy worked more than 40 years for Ford Motor Company, and I can't imagine and don't know Otis's story, but I know my granddaddy's story. And I, I know the stories of how he worked on that assembly line and, and how he worked and made sure everybody was intact and everybody had their thing right and everybody was doing what they were supposed to do. I remember my grandfather's story about how he had made sure that he had invented something that would make the assembly line go forth. And he came to his supervisor and told his supervisor, I came up with this idea so that this assembly line would move forth smoothly and well. And that uh, supervisor took the idea for himself and said, look at the idea I came up with. And my grandfather was so frustrated because he was the one that came up with the idea. He was the one that was working hard. He was the one that was doing all the work and someone else took the credit for his hard work. And my grandfather would tell stories about coming home and being frustrated and coming home after working hard hours and coming home and not being able to see his family because he was so tired when he got home. He would talk about the challenges he experienced working hard for somebody else when you did not get the appreciation that you should have got. But I love the narrative of men like my grandfather and Otis Franklin because they understood that what we have is not because of who we are, but what we have is only because of the God that created us. And literally all that we have, brothers and sisters, today is not because of how great we are, nor is it because of how well we are, but it's only because of a God that looks out for us us. Isaiah chapter 43 verse number 21 and 20 and 19 speaks of God speaking to the children of Israel and telling them I created you to show off my glory. I created you in the very instances and in the very formation and the very creation of that you are not simply because I wanted to have a creation, but I created you so that the world would know that I'm God and the world would be able to stop and watch and see the majesty of my power. And as I begin to analyze and look at these people who are here today and as I begin to see you all who are watching us on the screen it is not because of how good we've been nor is it because of how well we've been but it's only been because of God creating us and God giving us the very things we have to be able to be the people we are and today we've come to celebrate one who was created to show off, not himself, but show off the God that is existed within him. And so when you see the stylish dress, when you see the nice things that he had, when you see how well he took care of his family, when you see the hard labor that he executed and demonstrated, if Otis was here today to give his own eulogy, he'll tell you it wasn't because of how strong I was, it wasn't because of how great I was, it was only because God put me on display to demonstrate straight to you how great my God is. And Isaiah chapter 43 demonstrates to all of us that we are all on display. We are not on display for others to say how great we are. We are not on display for others to say how well we have done. We are not on display to so, so that people can gloat and people can celebrate us. But God has put you on this earth for the time that you are on this earth so that folk could see the God in you. Isaiah 43 God tells the children of Israel that I created you to show off 
my praise. And when I begin to analyze what it means for us to show off God, there are two things in particular that we're supposed to show off. The first thing we're supposed to show off is the favor of God. Notice in verse 20, the wild animals honor me. The jackals and the owls provide, I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Literally what God was sharing to the children of Israel is I have put you where you are so that you could show off to the world how great I am. But how you're going to show it off is by me providing for you in moments when you couldn't provide for yourself. Look at the scripture. The scripture says, listen to what I have done. I put water in the wilderness. And if you know anything about a wilderness, there ain't no water in the wilderness. As the children of Israel sojourned through the wilderness, they were thirsty and hungry. But guess what? Every time they were in need, the Lord provided water in the wilderness. And you know what the provision of water in the wilderness represents? It represents the grace and the favor of God. It symbolizes that you could go through this wilderness starving and going without water. You could go through this wilderness and die out like other folk have died out. But the reality is you were able to be preserved through the wilderness because of my grace. And I love that because sometimes God will put us in hard situations and God will put us in difficult situations. God will put us in crazy situations. Situations. So when people see us and they see that we've made it through our wilderness experiences, they won't say how great you are. They only say how great is the favor of God. You know, I, I had an opportunity to go over to the Franklin household when I had first got here. And as I walked into the house, I heard that uh, Brother Franklin had had a stroke. And I've seen stroke victims. I've seen them being deformed. I've seen them uh, looking not how they looked before they had a stroke. But when I walked in the kitchen to see that individual who had a stroke, I was looking for something bad. I was looking for something out of the order. I was looking for somebody that had some major issues but when I walked into that kitchen I didn't see a feeble man but I saw a man that symbolized internal strength I saw a man that I wouldn't mess with on my best day I saw a man that had strength and I was trying to figure out how can a man have such strength and how could a man have such will after experiencing such a difficult stroke that took him off his feet and you know why he had that strength you know why he looked so good it was only because God had put him on display and he had shared with us that I can give grace to those who seemingly should not have any grace and that's all of our testimonies you ain't where you are because of how good you are you're not where you are because you have dotted every I and crossed every T but you are where you are because God put you on display and he sprinkled his grace on you so the world could see how great God is. God gives us grace so that Others can see you when you should have been messed up, when you should have been down. And the life of Otis Franklin is a life of grace. <laughs> Life of Otis Franklin is a life of favor. And I love the God who put me on the runway of life. Because as I walked the runway, I walked the runway knowing I shouldn't even be walking the runway. I walked the runway knowing it's only by God's grace and God's mercy that I'm able to walk the walk and do the very things I do. But I'm only... Does God want? 
to show off his grace. Yeah. The life of Otis Franklin shows us that he wants also to show off his name. Right. Listen to verse 21. It says, the people I formed for myself, they are to proclaim yeah. my praise. <laughs> you know what that word praise means? That word praise means that I thank God for what God has done in my life. See, there's a difference between the word praise and worship. Worship, I celebrate God for who God is. But praise, I celebrate God for what God has done in my life. And the beautiful piece about the praise of God is that I praise God because God has done something in my life that I could not do on my own. Now what's amazing about that is, is that the reason why God does such great things in our lives is not simply because God wants to do it, although that's why God does it. God does amazing things because God is in love relationship with us. And I love you so much that I'm going to give you something. But also God does amazing things in our life because God's name is on the line. And literally, I praise God because God has done something amazing in my life. And God has done it because God's word never returns to him void. And when God says something, you know God is going to do it because God's name is on the line. So when God says that I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you, and you feel the presence of God calming you in moments of difficulty and moments of stress, it ain't because God just wanted to do it. God did that because his name was on the line. And when we think about the other day and, and Brother Otis left here and left here to go to a place, as one brother said, mansions and scripture teaches us that Jesus says, I go away to prepare a place for you. Where I am, you shall be there also. Literally, God took Otis not because God just wanted to take Otis. God took Otis because God's name was on the line. The scripture teaches us that if this tabernacle be dissolved, I have a place that is not made by man's hand and is eternal in the heavens. Well, a year ago, his tabernacle started to dissolve. Uh, a year ago, his body started to fall apart and God said, my name is on the line. And so if my name is on the line and his tabernacle is starting to fall apart, his tabernacle is starting to dissolve, I've got to get down there and give him a body and take him to a place that is not made by man's hand and is each in the heavens. Can I suggest to you that God came and got Otis and Otis life is a life of praise because God's name is on the line. So we do not weep and sorrow like those who have no hope. We do not cry like those who have no hope. Why? Because God has done something wonderful. God has done something amazing. God's word has not returned to God void. And today we celebrate the fact that the life of Otis Franklin is a life that has been showed off, not for himself, but for the glory of God. Amen. Our undertakers can come.
asking for nine ladies for flowers. And so if nine ladies would come, Also, those who are going to be Paul Bears today, would you prepare yourselves? All of our Paul Bears. to ask that everyone not walk yet until the family has processed out. What about Paul Bears? All right. Right. We all stand. Just line up behind me, Paul Bears. All our ministers behind me, and then the Paul Bears behind me. All right, let us all stand. 